I think that there are ways to go into spaces that are that are under under attack by a law like this. Um, uh, when it's a large group of queer people entering that space that they've not really been welcomed into, uh, you can do things that are that are provocative and that ask questions and that challenge challenge the law in a different way. Um, so I, I don't I don't think that there's necessarily one right way to 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 protest a law like this. And for me, being involved in the festival. Um, I wanted to make sure that if I was to come, that that myself and that in a, in a general sense, that all of us were in defiance of the law. I said, as a black man from America, I was like, I'm looking at I'm looking at you two white men, and I, and I said, don't don't act like you don't know. But I just said we've been having this problem for at least 400 years in this country. So I just said the simple fact that it's something that's perpetuated by people that were your ancestors that caused this problem and you're benefiting from to this day is causing this mess. I was like, this foundation was caused on chaos stemming that's causing this chaos now. And I just said, I'm not going to get into like the nuances or like the subdivisions trying to figure out this whole bathroom agenda. And I was just like, all humans deserve equal respect and rights, plain and simple, no matter who they are. Come to be seated. We ask that you please keep the board and area cleared on times. Once again, a very pleasant afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to welcome you on board Triple Airways flight number 985 with non stop service to Raleigh, Durham. You do have a full flight this afternoon as you make your way on board to stop us maximize that overhead bed space and shared space. My name is Trandall. I'm a producer, beat maker from Durham, Durham North Carolina, which is where Moog Fist is in 2016. And I'm super excited to have something like this here, having technology and art all in one place and, and living in harmony, showing that like, you know, it's, it's like it can be put together. and people in Europe about this bill. I'm staying with two lesbians, you know, I didn't want to pay money to the Marriott. You know, I, I made certain choices, but it's, it's, it's really about us talking to each other. It, on one hand, it is, it, is a, it is a cowardly attack on, on a group that, that is already vulnerable um, people, uh, people who are not cisgender, people who are trans, people who are non-binary, um, deal with a whole host of factors and challenges in their lives already, just to start with. <laughs> past, past a law, past a law that targets them, just to like wake up and be a trans person in the world comes with challenges. Um. It's, right, instead of instead of from addressing these issues that affect everyone, we will all deal with an environment that falls apart, and we will all deal with economic crisis. Um, and and so to to take this thing and it's so cowardly and 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 misdirect people's attention while at the same time doing you know egregious harm to very to to real people is just such a stupefying combination of evil that it, it I, I feel like I should not be surprised anymore but it surprises even me <laughs> I would say
say that in general, dance music has always had a woman problem. Um, it's very interesting to me. I saw a discussion where there was a bunch of people kind of, every once in a while, because the internet is terrible, I'll run across, uh, I'll find some thread where a bunch of strangers are talking about me, and which is the worst thing in the whole world to have happen. We are all in big trouble because women were have been excluded at every level from the very beginning all the way back through disco from certain kinds of roles. Um, dance music is, and uh, house culture is complicated. So, some people are straight, some people are gay. Some, some, of the, some of the people most deeply involved in the history of house music are black and some of them are white. Some of them are Hispanic. Um, the story is, is complicated and deep and, and assigning who should participate or who should not based on the history of it is going to leave many, many, many people out of the future. Um, and so I think our challenge now is to, is to, on one hand, to, to break this idea that women cannot be the auteur or the maestro or whatever. And then on the other hand, it's to reimagine dance music um, as even more rich and even more diverse than it ever has been um, because it, it is changing and it is growing. And I can say without hesitation that um, many of the people who helped create this, this form as we understand it now, um, hoped and dreamed of of dance music being a truly a truly global truly diverse phenomenon um I, I know that that's how frankie nichols felt i know it's how pierre feels um I, and our our job as a dance music community is to help realize that and and to make it a good place for women to work and people of all different colors and 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 trans folks and 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 make dance music can be so much more than it is now. Um, there is no preconception most of the time. You really start from scratch, especially with the new album we're working on right now, Empty Canvas. We want to get Chill Out World for our record. We realize that the acronym for Chill Out World is much more fun and much more all like. <laughs> it's something that is magical and music in us. 12 notes as something that, for me, it's, it's the ultimate expression of how I want to express myself to this world. And I'm lucky enough to do that. I'm lucky enough to have people around me and that we feed off each other so well. And it is 25 years and we still haven't had a really good old No day job anymore. Oh. No, this is full time now. How does that feel? Yeah. Ah, very free. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my job doesn't sit around my day, which is amazing because it's hard to create like that when everything depends on I have to be at work at this time and you feel pressure. And sometimes pressure is good, but then it's also nice not to have pressure too. And there have been so many things I have had to turn down because of working. And I just, I'm happy that I don't have to do that anymore. I can't imagine that. Yeah, it's, it's pain. Some, some things have been painful. And then I, I just, like, I swore to myself never again. And then December 31st, I just made the decision. I said, nope, I'm gone. <laughs> Anything that sounds good, I work with things that aren't even musical instruments. <laughs> yeah, so whatever sounds good. But yes, I do hardware, software, um, 
so many things um but you know whatever whatever makes i th- whatever i feel would make something go that's what i'll use to to create yeah what happens is you're going into a place that is so difficult for you to go, you barely can stand it. It's making you not complacent. You're having to dig inside of yourself instead of just doing something that's mediocre that you know you can do. Now you're actually having to dig inside of yourself and say, this is hard for me. You know, this is very difficult for me. I have on my Bruce Lee shirt and the best thing I, that he, I love that he's be like, be, you know, like water, my friend, it's so true. And um, I just, I love, uh, movement a great deal it because uh, you, a person the way a person moves the way they walk just anything the way they you know inhaling and exhaling all those things matter at least for me when it comes to creating um and because it's just so many i just for me abstract ideas i never have i don't really have a concept of things that i do because whatever really kind of just comes out just comes out but i i, I do i have always i'm fascinated with uh dance i really do i I enjoy it especially things like the um like ballet i feel that the arts never should have been separated um because that i think when people don't understand things they have a tendency to categorize it when in fact they don't really need to be categorized because it's all under the same family that i don't think a set should be perfect i don't like perfect sets i don't like when a set is played everything was in sync actually like when things crash or when they don't work but you make it work anyway because that's what i that's what i do that's the way i produce i, I produce exactly that way so a lot of times when i hear a set and it's just all perfect and everything it's like yeah woo, and it's just like Okay, that's cool and all, but for me, it doesn't work. But so it's just like I kind of like the I like the imperfection because I'm not a machine. I'm not. I am this person who has a passion, and I try to give my audience that and give my audience that vulnerability. That's why I think a lot of times they follow me because I'm willing to be naked in front of them. But because I don't, it's not real if I can't be vulnerable, and they're vulnerable because they don't know what to expect from me. So we're both in this space, vulnerable together, and everybody, and then we just kind of, you know, crowd around each other and we feed off of each other's energy, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Speaking, it was a, 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 a cumulative effect of multiple artists that influenced my artistry. Sun Ra was top of the list, but it was a lot of other people around him. I mean, it was just like Miles Davis, Coltrane, Thelonious Monk, you know, um, Cab Calloway, you know, the way Bootsy Collins, you know, looks, you know, the way, you know, certain like um, uh, uh, Isaac Hayes. You know, like the influence of like early soul uh, singers and like jazz dance, you know what I'm saying? Like musicians from the 70s, like Roy Ayers and, you know, stuff like that. You know, it just made me think like I could be different than what's marketed today in any music culture. So, but Sunrise was definitely the precursor to a lot of the people I even mentioned when it comes to having a different cosmic image or presentation to the world that we live in, you know? So I try not to do the whole glitter, you know, get up or whatever, because I try to represent myself in my truest form, then go for all the gimmicks. So I would attract to the things that wasn't of the norm. It's always been like that in literature and art and visual medium, you know, same thing when it comes to like, you know, listening to other uh, music. I mean, even the way I dress, it's just like, I can't wear jeans, it's just not me, you know? I can't wear regular shoes, it's not me, you know what I'm saying? Hell, I don't even have a regular watch, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. don't have a regular watch. I, yeah, I know, I don't have a regular wallet, you know what I'm saying? It's just how I am, I'm kinda like, I'm bending the matrix the best I can in my own constructs, you, you know what I'm saying? So that's what anybody can ever do, you know? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're stuck in this realm, we're stuck on this planet, but you just gotta do you that's without, harming anybody else. You can always fend somebody. As long as you don't harm nobody, it's all good, yeah. Yeah. No, but let's keep it real. I 
was homeless. Okay. We could romanticize it. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a gutter punk. You know right. what I'm saying? Gutter punks do that whole come from rich families and they want to be on the street with their dog and their girlfriend and like beg for change. No, that's not the case. I was literally like, my parents was like, yo, you want some stuff, go figure yourself out, but you can't be here. You know, so, and I had to go find myself. And then when I did, you know, I thanked them for it. At the point in time, I was bitter, but I'm here, I survived. You know what I'm saying? And it made me who I am today. So those experiences helped me be strong now, no matter what I go through. It built fortitude, it built courage. It built something in me to, in, in to, to stay strong, no matter how bad or hard times may get, you know? So it's because you have to be conscious and aware of the environment around you. You have to be conscious and aware about the existence that you are in. A lot of people are not conscious of it because we have the medium of television and movies and radio and marketing and billboards and then drama and, you know, distractions in life. So you don't get to study thyself because you're like, you're distracted with the world, the world outside yourself. So that's what I come to about being in tune with the universe. When you're in tune with the universe, you become in tune with yourself. When you're not in tune with the universe, then you have chaos. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in the chaos, the distractions are the things outside the world that does harm to thyself and not help thyself. So that's how I look at it. So it's like you know the world around you, the universe around you, by really knowing and feeling the experience that you have as you get older and you get wiser. You're, you're wasting a precious commodity, which is time. Everything, everything fades. Everything comes into being. Everything comes out of existence. You know, you have planets that explode, become comets and meteors. You have suns that become supernova. And then, you know, they become wormholes when they expire. Everything has its purpose, you know. And right now, I am a sun. I am a planet, you know what I'm saying? I am a moon. I, I, I know what my existence is, and I need to fulfill that purpose before I become, you know, a black hole or a supernova, you know what I'm saying, or an asteroid. Or as they would say, become dust, you know? So I keep working at what I do to hopefully help others. You know, there are people who might hate what I do and they might get inspired to do better. There's people who love what I do and they might inspire them to do better. But in the process, I, I accumulate resources to be able to help other people to, to, to find their orbits, their galactic, you know what I'm saying, rotation. And in, in, that, in that process, they'll have satellites orbiting around them that they're able to help, you know what I'm saying, to come to fruition, you know, in, in, this, in this existence. Every set for me is some kind of version of the story of my life. The things that I care about, the, the ideas in dance music that I've kind of lived through and gone through. Um, you know, when I'm playing New Order, it's not just New Order. It's the, it's, New Order is the sound of my mother's kitchen in 1987 when she started dating my stepfather. You know, when I play, when I play the Pet Shop Boys, it's the, it's, it's the cassette single that I had as a kid that I played until it broke and taped it back together. If I play Public Enemy, it's the it's the first great rap record that I ever that I ever truly loved. And you know, I've been DJing for twenty years and I'm a wildly different DJ than I was two years ago. And to me that is so thrilling. That you can you can set the high water mark for yourself and then maybe just one Sunday they go, okay, you're going to close Panorama and you end up playing for nine hours and it pushes you into this whole different almost like it, ch it challenges you physically, mentally and spiritually in such a way that when you're done, you're changed and your DJing is different the next day than it was the day before. And that is such an exciting part of DJing is that you're, you're never, you're never done. You can always be thrown a little further into the deep end and have it change you. And I, I, I certainly have. Like, 
some of the biggest changes in my life as a DJ have happened in the last six months. I felt uh, very reassured by all of the questions that the festival was already asking, the way that they were addressing bathrooms and um, the long history of this this company and this brand um, having extremely positive, creative relationships um, with uh, people of many different gender expressions, and so. Uh, I wanted to make sure, though, that if I was going to do this, that number one, um, we, we could use it to do a good thing and uh, to, to take some money and, 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 send, it, and send it to the right places. Um, and number two, that uh, I could be a part of whatever, whatever defiance of this law was, was possible for us.